Hickok 45. Looks like a 5.7 sort of day, doesn't it? Yep, there it is. The Ruger 5.7 or 57 or whatever you want to call it. But it is 5.7 by 28. Is that pretty cool? You've been asking for it. <laughs> wow, have you? And uh, actually, I hate to admit it, we've had it for a few weeks before SHOT Show even. And uh, been shooting it some. Thought I'd bring it out. Shoot it on camera. How's that? Actually, you saw it in one of the uh, Sunday shoot rounds. One of the early Sunday shoot rounds before SHOT Show, I think. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it around the chamber. And I'm going to take a couple of shots with it to show you it does work. Okay. I'm going to shoot a jug right away. <laughs> yeah, boy. It. Oh, let's smoke a little pot with it. See if it'll do that. <laughs> That's one of the disadvantages of shooting this little cartridge. You just can't see where they're hitting. <laughs> Boom! It got a bowling pin. Okay. Yeah, let's go over here and talk about it a little bit before I empty that mag. All right. You think that one will shoot without the mag? Yes, it will. It's one of those things we caution you about. Boom. Okay. So, because uh, this one does not have the magazine disconnect like the FN does. So, yes, sending us this. Uh, yeah, I've been shooting it for uh, a few weeks off and on. I, what I've done is I have, I've loaded up both mags four times, really on four different days, I think. And brought them out and just shot them. Weather's been really bad. So I'd be in a barn, you know, maybe having a cigar or whatever, doing some cleanup. And I'm going to shoot that again. I load up a couple of mags. That's 40 rounds, right? 20 plus 20, is that right? I don't know. Where's my calculator? So, uh, you yeah, know, so I've done that a couple of times. And I've not had any problems yet. All right? Uh, as, as we always did, uh, remind you, usually we remind you pretty often, that this is one sample. And, you know, it's, so far, it's, it's worked like a champ. And, uh, you, know, it, you know, sometimes uh, you know, firing works for us. It doesn't work for other people and vice versa. Like the python, for example, you know, you just don't know. It's one sample, one firearm, and, uh, you know, that's all we know. You have to, to wait, as I also remind everybody, after a firearm has been out a while, you begin to see the trends on the internet, don't you? The experiences people are having with it. Like right now, this seems really reliable. I have heard some negative comments on it about people having some malfunctions, but I don't know, you know, we've not. So uh, I did see one other video, a piece of one, somebody was saying they've been shooting it a lot and not had any problems either though. So, so apparently it's pretty reliable. Uh, and before I get too hot, let me show you how it breaks down. Now, we I, we have talked about, we haven't done a video on the FN for a long time, but we've done a little bit on the, the PS90. And, you know, I have one of those, the semi-automatic version of that. And I've talked about that cartridge. And it's been out long enough now. I think most people are kind of familiar with it. Came around in, what, around 1990 in the PS90 or the P90. And then was on the civilian market around 2004, I guess, in the, the handgun. And uh, yeah, so the ballistics testing, people have extensively tested the, these cartridges and the various versions of that 5.7 by uh, 28, you know, round. So, you know, and it gets mixed reviews. A lot of people hate it. Some people love it. I don't think that people have flocked to the FN. I mean, do you know anybody that were this? And I'll comp do a little comparison. Can't really avoid that, can you? Uh, how many of your friends carry this pistol? It's their carry gun, for example. Really? Uh, now, maybe that'll change a little bit because one of the cool things about this Ruger is it's less expensive. You know, it's not maybe half the amount, but I think you're going to be able to buy these for around or the ones that have been bought around 650, 700 in that vicinity. Whereas the FN pistol, 5.7 it's called, I think it sells for about 1250, maybe 1300, depending on where you live, that kind of thing, okay? So a lot less expensive. So it'll be interesting to see, is this cartridge gonna experience a rebirth, a big rebirth, you know? I don't think it, 
it will to a to a extreme degree but i think it's going to help it i understand i read at least that uh spear is bringing out the a gold bot version of it or something and there's some other ammo companies that are starting to make it that had not been because up to now there just hadn't been that many different choices in ammo federal's been one of them that's been around a good while now and i've got a little bit of uh, some of the fn ammo uh, this uh 190 ss 198 lf which is kind of a law enforcement version that stuff's expensive uh, i got some of that for the p90 that i have and uh green tip and we may shoot a little bit of that you know but but it's the ammo's out there and you can buy it and uh, if you like it you know ammo is available it's just not really that cheap yet and speaking of metal that's 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 out there take a look at the old atmix uh, coins there got those at atmix appreciate their help check out the uh, link in the description got some good old uh, what are those oh american eagle gold bullion or silver bullion you can get gold, silver, you can get uh, old coins, old quarters, old dimes, whatever you like, okay? It's available. And we really appreciate uh, atmex.com helping us. Check the links in the description, okay? There's a Hickok 45 favorites page there, too. Check that out. All right, so let's shoot some of this uh, precious metal right here. A little bit more, okay? It's a little bullet going pretty fast. It depends on your ammo. You know what, from 1,600 feet per second up to around 2,000 or something, or even over, depending on the ammo and the weight of the bullet. But that's a claim to fame again. You know, do a little research, do a little Googling, look at our other videos, look at all the stuff that's out there. It's a, a little bullet, it's very light, and it's going really fast. So if that appeals to you, and plus having a magazine that holds 20, you would probably like either one of these firearms possibly so let's finish off this one and uh let's go out to the gong okay I, you know i kind of not sure where to hold exactly but I, i've shot it enough to get an idea yeah i heard a couple of them hit it i'm gonna go to that red plate on the right because it's a little thinner, at least 3 eighths. See if I can hear it. Got it on the last shot, I think, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it seems plenty accurate. Uh, the grip's a little thin for me. Uh, yeah, I, would, I would put some talon grips on that, thicken it up just a hair. It will probably feel good to a lot of people, though, because of the contour of it. It's got a pretty good shape. Uh, but it's just a little thin for me, which means it might be perfect for you, right? Uh, so it seems to shoot fine. You got adjustable sights on it, uh, windage elevation. You got the optic uh, in front there. And, uh, you know, you got the cutouts to keep the slide the correct weight, you know, for the round. And it's a kind of an unusual uh, pistol, except that it is more like a, a, I don't know, typical pistol you might have already. That's one of the things I think people are going to like about it and do like about it. I like about it more so than the FN. It's uh, it's more of a normal pistol. You know, you got your uh, your safety there if you want a safety. You want to use it. You got thumb safety. You know, and it just operates kind of like the pistol you're accustomed to. Whereas the FN, uh, this thing is different. It, it really is. Uh, <laughs> You've got a, what did I cut myself? You have a, uh, the safety is out here, if you recall. So it's designed to be used ambidextrous, but, you know, with your finger out there, so that's a little different. Or with your off thumb, you know, I tend to use my thumb. I'm holding the gun like this and operate with my thumb, uh, but it's out there, and this is your slide lock back here. It's still your thumb safety. And then the breakdown is a little kind of odd, a little different. And the gun's a little odd, okay? It, it's a little bit like a just a, <laughs> a high dollar uh, high point in a way. It, it really feels like, looks like one. Now it does feel like quality. You know, you've got your slide encased in polymer. It's a metal slide, but it's encased in polymer. It makes it a little bit bigger. It sits up high in your hand. The bore axis is high. So it, it, it feels like, a, <laughs> like your, your kid's uh, squirt gun in a way. It just feels awkward. But it has a better trigger. Uh, it's got the uh, disconnect for a mag in, but it's got a better trigger than I think the Ruger. Yeah, it's got a pretty nice break on it, okay?
So anyway, this one, let's show you how it breaks down while I've got it back here. All right, so you've got your, uh, your release there. You can use a mag. You've got to push the opposite side button here. Get that pushed. There we go. Brings that out. And turn it down. Okay. And then uh, you just release the slide. And it just comes off. Comes Both of them are like that. They come upward. You don't have to slide them out. And uh, there you go. Got this cute little barrel. It's funny. When you take these apart, you know, <laughs> you're reminded. Look at that. <laughs> Oh boy, this is a little beer. The barrel has been uh, coated and nitrited and everything, uh, hardened because you do have a high pressure round, all right? So uh, it's uh, apparently supposedly made well and, and treated properly for that high pressure you know, ammo because it is a fast little bullet, okay? And it goes back together like all these guns do. The, the most unusual thing is just that little barrel, that little pencil, small pencil barrel, right? You get that lined up in the middle because you got a kind of a round barrel to it there. You know, interesting. And you notice your ex uh, extractor is up here on top and the ejector is down there on the bottom, the opposite side. So because of that, I guess that small barrel and small cartridge is just requires some different uh, you know, engineering, right? And I was not an engineer. I am not an engineer, so I don't know much about that. Oh, what am I doing? You don't really have to do that. You want to, in fact, it might not even work. You push it, sort of push it down like that. Get it in the groove, then you push this back in. Oh, one trick to this barrel has to be rearward or you'll have trouble. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so when you're putting it back together, just remember to tap the front of that barrel. Okay, if you're having any trouble. Solve you, save you a little uh, grief there. Uh, you know, it feels like a, you know, not all that much different from your, your SIG or your, I've got one of those out here, you know, your SIG or your Glock or whatever, all right? Whereas again, the FN just has a different feel to it. Let's shoot a little bit more, all right? All right. Now, the claim to fame, of course, is with this cartridge, you've got a lot of velocity and you have a flat shooting bullet. So whenever you're shooting at 100 yards, you won't have to allow so much by <laughs> for elevation, right? And, uh, you know, you got a, a lot of ammo. It holds 20 rounds in a mag and still flush. And, uh, you know, and you got low recoil. <laughs> I'm going I'm to shoot the, the cowboy. I, I have shot him some, and it doesn't... It doesn't seem to damaging it, that AR-500 steel, but some of this uh, 5.7 ammo I think would. Let's try uh, a little two liter over there. A little trouble shooting, huh? <laughs> it's mainly the cold weather, okay? Uh, So you notice it doesn't blow up the two liters. It just sort of causes them to start leaking. You know, that's just what it does. And uh, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, well, I'll save that pot for the uh, the FN, okay? Let's try those bowling pins right here, those red ones. Yeah, I think I got the sights pretty much on. And you can see how much it's recoiling, which is basically none. So that's one of the appeals of the cartridge in a firearm like this. Low recoil, lots of ammo, you know, flat shooting, you know, what else? And one of the claims of fame of that cartridge is it's supposed to shoot through a vest and all that sort of thing. And some of the ammo that's available, like maybe that, you would possibly. So if you anticipate that you would be needing to shoot through a bulletproof vest, uh, you know, you might want something like this. But then uh, any good rifle round would do the same thing, right? Almost. So, uh, you know, a 5.56 five, and that sort of thing. So, what else about it? You got your fiber optic, you got your ambidextrous uh, uh, safety, you saw the breakdown. Uh, it feels solid. I've not had a malfunction uh, yet. I, I shouldn't say that out loud, should I? Because that, that's a kiss of death, I guess. Uh, it, it feels pretty, I think it's going to feel pretty good to most people. Now, it's a big gun. It's not a small gun. 
Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, it fits a niche, fills a niche that I, not, I don't know how many people are looking for a gun this size, you know, in this cartridge. But, you know, why not? You know, if you can do it. It's kind of cool, I guess, to offer something else now in handgun is available in this cartridge because for so long there was nothing. And, uh, you know, all we had was the FN and a pretty pricey firearm. And so, I don't know, I think it's probably had consistent sales, and there's a lot of them have been sold. Uh, we did videos on them like eight years ago. I remember I couldn't hit much with it. And I think, I don't know if the sights were off a little bit, or I was off mentally, I know I am. And then the fact that you, it's hard to tell where you're hitting, even if shooting paper. I mean, I literally couldn't see those holes without taking a step forward. And... Uh, you know, and then shooting over there, you just barely can hear what you're you're hitting. Because, and again, the physics of that. You know, of course, I've reminded y'all many times. I was a physics professor at MIT for 30 years, and some of you even believed it. Uh, but you know, the gunshot is pretty loud, and the bullet is there so fast that uh, you know you, you just can't hear it. Whereas if you're shooting a 22 long rifle. Uh, which is a small bullet. You know, the, the gunfire is not that loud. It's kind of over with. By the time the bullet gets out there, so you don't have that issue as much. Okay, does that make sense? Let me load a little of this uh, other stuff. You know, I haven't shot any of this through it yet, so let's do it today. You'll experience it with me. Okay, <laughs> this, again, this is some of that, that FN, what, SS-198 LF, lead free. So it's a, I guess it's an all copper bullet, and it's a hollow point. Whoa wicked stuff it's not cheap i think i forgot where i found that but that's something i bought and uh so you know like i say it sells for you know around 650 probably uh seven so it's uh you know in the ballpark of a lot of other popular pistols so i i think a lot of people get enamored with this cartridge and possibly overly excited about it, I don't know. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but, uh, you know, it, I don't know. It, it doesn't appeal to me that much, put it that way. Okay, I'll be honest, uh, as I always am. Uh, I have never bought one of those. You know, we got both these from Buds, just for your enjoyment and for the video. Uh, requested both of these, so again, we appreciate their sending both of these. Just so I could do a little comparison, because I hadn't had the FN around for uh, a good while and had kind of forgotten about it, you know. Uh, what I knew about it, I had to relearn how to break it down again. I, I'd really forgotten. And with it, it's a little different, you know. It's got that, uh, let's get one of the mags over here. I mean, they're all loaded, but it's, uh, you have to have a mag. Well, you don't have to pull the trigger, I noticed on it. But uh, you pull back on, you take the pressure off the mag and you push that all the way back. And then the slide just lifts off the same way. Right? So, so they break down in a little in a similar fashion. You just pull straight up. And then to put it back on, you do the same thing. Push that back. Lock it down. There you go. You're in action. So I hadn't had one of those for a while. So let me try these with this uh, Ruger. Because I hadn't done that. Let's put the right mag in. I knew I would do that before it was over. Okay, the Ruger mags are steel. And the uh, FN mags are polymer. All right. Now, I don't think I want to shoot any steel here close with these. Let's shoot a two liter, see if we can tell any different. Let's shoot this uh, gallon jug right here. So maybe there's a little difference with this ammo. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go over there on that red plate on the right again. Yeah, I can't tell her. I'm going to hit the gong. <laughs> it's so loud, you just can't tell. Now, since we've got this stuff in here, let's try that pot. The big pot. <laughs> Finished it off, right? So that ammo worked fine. So again, no malfunctions yet. Uh, please. I was going to shoot this and, and this side by side. I think I have a mag, yeah. So take a look at the, if you can tell any difference. 
I'll shoot the uh, this one, and then I'll load that one and shoot. All right. I'll go. I'll work on that cinder block a little bit. Okay. I'll put the safety on. Lay it down. Shoot this one a little bit. All right. So let's try the uh, gong with this one. <laughs> I'm not sure where to hold, to tell you the truth. So I don't know if you get, to me, they feel about the same in terms of recoil. They both work. Uh, this one feels a little clunky because it's just bigger. But, uh, you know, uh, anyway, really reliable. I've, I've heard mixed reviews on this too. I've heard people say they had malfunctions with them. Uh, I don't recall in the videos we did earlier if we did or not, but uh, so I don't know. Anyway, this this one is I'm gonna put the safety off and empty it. All right, we got more targets out here. Mm. Oh, that's empty. I forgot. Yeah, let's try the old cat. Oh, a pulling pin. <laughs> Let's see what we'll do to a plate, swinging plate. So it's easy to hold on target once you get the feel of where to hold it and everything. Uh, so, so there's more what I shoot four mags. It has not malfunctioned, okay? So that's uh, what I say about four times two, eight mags, and then four more, uh, 20 in all the mags. And uh, from, from the very first shot, it has worked, okay? Uh, so so that's, that's always important. How about maybe the most important uh, factor? It seems reliable, okay? And again, it's more of your traditional handgun. And uh, the trigger, let's get a negative here. The trigger is not great. It's got a lot of take up, which is okay. That doesn't bother me. But it gets a little, yeah, it gets a little gritty and creepy as you get back to ready to break. It, creepy and gritty, and then it breaks. Now, it's not horrible, and you can, you can still shoot it just fine. <laughs> but it's not as nice as the F FN trigger. It's got a pretty crisp break, even though the grip feels awkward to me. Okay, I've heard people complain about the reset. I don't really see that big a deal. It's, you know, it's right there. I mean, I mean, I, I don't, you know, people would like a shorter reset. I, I don't think it's that bad, you know, but, uh, but anyway, not a bad gun. It seems to work. And if you like this cartridge, it's probably a, a firearm you'll want to have because hey, you don't have a lot of choices, do you? And, uh, you know, it comes apart just fine. And uh, it seems plenty accurate. I've not had any trouble with the sights. Uh, I just have not really tried to bear down. It's always been cold and uncomfortable, it seems like, when I'm shooting it. But uh, I think I did raise the rear sight a little bit and got it, you know, to where it seemed to be closer to the ballpark. And it seems to work. So, uh, and what else about it that I've not lied to you about? So your metal mag, the price, uh, the cartridge. Again, I'm not going to go into the history of that again, but it's uh, yeah, it's a cartridge that doesn't appeal to me that much. In fact, I thought about selling my PS90. Uh, I don't ever shoot it. Uh, I, it's just a thing. I've, you know, maybe it's because I'm called Hickok 45. I like heavier, bigger bullets. I don't know. I like a nine just fine. Well, and here's the thing too: the capacity turns a lot of people on. I'll let you go, but you know, if 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 you think, wow, I can get 20 rounds in that thing, uh, wow, that's a machine, isn't it? 20 rounds. Yeah. Well, you can get a Sig or a Glock 17 or any number of other firearms, and this is a, a firearm that is in the house. It's it's a defensive firearm. That's why the mag's always loaded. But uh, I never have one in it. But that holds uh, 17 rounds right there and you can get what 20 round and 25 round mags and all that so you know you've got a firearm that feels good in nine millimeter you know and a glock 17 or something or something similar 
that holds uh, almost the same number of rounds. So I don't know that that should be the deciding factor. You know, oh wow, I've got to buy it because of capacity. So anyway, do your research. If, you're, uh, if you've got the hots for one of these because you, you think you want something in that round, I would do some more research on that cartridge, what people have discovered in terms of effectiveness, if you're thinking of it in self-defense, uh, reliability, just everything, okay? And then, you know, just make an educated choice. For me, uh, I make a lot of uneducated choices, and, <laughs> and I'm just not a big fan of it, you know? I'm not. Uh, but uh, this firearm works well, and if, uh, it seems to, and if you like that, uh, that cartridge, uh, hey, go for it. Uh, so again, for 650, 700 bucks, it's a great alternative to the FN. This might be a higher quality firearm. No, no, we could argue about that. But uh, you know, this one uh, seems to do what it's supposed to do. It's a Ruger, and I imagine it'll be out there uh, in in big numbers as they catch up with demand. So Ruger 57, 5.7 by 28. That's the cartridge. And uh, it's out there, so I thought I'd give you a look at it. And I appreciate y'all requesting it over and over and over again. I was in a gun shop just yesterday. They said they get more calls about this firearm than any other right now. So a lot of people have interest in it, I guess. So maybe I'm really in the minority. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, While well, I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to Im improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years it's a cleaner and a lubricant and it's non-toxic uh, it works really great and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time so go to ballastall.com talongungrips.com and also while you're out there i'm juggling all these things here also uh while you're on the internet please do check out our other social media like hickok 45 on facebook there's also hickok 45 on twitter the real Hickok 45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok 45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.